Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the early Eocene, South America, like much of the world, basked in tropical, balmy climes. The Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum was in full sway, leading to an expansion of humid, dense forests across the continent. As in modern rainforests, the trees and undergrowth teemed with life. A mix of old endemics and northern immigrant taxa thrived in these conditions, providing groundwork for an explosion in evolutionary novelty. The best record of this ancient world comes from the recently excavated Itaborai site in southern Brazil. Despite facing a lack of resources and stiff resistance from local wildlife, Alter Earth paleontologists have managed to uncover a reasonably diverse assemblage of Eocene animals, albeit in a poorer condition than we would like. Although a significant number of genera have been catalogued and named, many are known from very scant remains. Almost all mammals recovered from Itaburai are represented by teeth or pieces of jaw. Only the pseudiprotodont Metatherium Condontotherium Capricornum and the Mesongulated Brazilianulatum planidens are known from almost complete skulls. A significant proportion of Itaburai's mammals were Metatherians. These adaptable animals originated in the Northern Hemisphere and arrived in South America during the early Paleocene. From only a handful of immigrant taxa, Metatherians exploded in number and diversity. During the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, these mammals ran the gamut of ecological niches, from tiny insectivores to arboreal herbivores and ferocious cat-sized predators. Eutherians also made this transition, albeit in significantly smaller numbers. Among these were the one metre long, monkey-like herbivorous Chimelestum sciurilurus, and some of the oldest fossils belonging to true placentals so far discovered. Older native mammals were present in force at Itaborai. Dryolestoids were the second most populous mammal group found at the site, with mesongulatids being particularly commonplace. These derived herbivorous and omnivorous animals were notable for their derived tooth structure and overall large size, ranging from rabbit to wombat-like in proportions and lifestyle. Other, more basal dryolestoids were present as well, being small, probably diurnal omnivores. Gondwanotheres fulfilled the rodent-like roles taken on other continents by multituberculates, although their remains are rather rare at this particular fossil site. Outside of mammals, archosaurs were the next most common animal group at Itaburai. Crocodiliforms were represented by four genera. These consisted of one basal form, two notasuchians, and an alligatorid. One of the notasuchians, Sarculosuchus prototypicus, was a pig-like omnivore with an upturned snout and fleshy lips, while the other, Prothereosuchus complexus was a small carnivore with peculiarly mammal-like teeth. This latter notasuchian is the oldest known member of Storicosuchoidea, a highly derived group known in modern times from South America and Australia. Indeed, in modern Australia, these croc cousins are extremely diverse and have in some cases outcompeted non-avian dinosaurs in certain niches. Pterosaurs are known from a single genus of small as darkoid, possibly related to the European Carbacilophid Pseudotapajara, but this is uncertain at present. Non-avian dinosaurs are known from seven genera, with most of these being old endemics. Megaraptorans were the apex predators here, with abelosaurs being completely absent. Megaraptorans had by this stage taken over from the big carcharodontosaurs that died out at the end of the Cretaceous. A single partial forelimb with associated claws found at Itaburai belonged to a massive 10 meter long animal that has yet to be formally named. This predator probably lived alongside the large titanosaurs and hadrosaurs and almost certainly would have found its prey among them. Along with these giants lived some small North American immigrants that would, in the future, play significant roles in South American biodiversity. One was a troodontid descendant whose ancestors island hopped from North America during the late Cretaceous. Rioraptor gracilis was a generalized, adaptable animal very similar in overall form to Troodon. Possessing leaf-shaped teeth and a graceful build, 
Rio Raptor sat near the base of Noto Raptoria, a diverse clade that ranged from slow-moving high browsers to ornithomimosaur-like sprinters. The descendants of Cretaceous Unenlagines were becoming larger and stranger. These wading piscivores were moving into niches once occupied by spinosaurs and would have resembled giant toothy herons. The one example of these animals known from Itaburai was Guajiraptor fluminensis, an approximately 7 meter long semi-aquatic animal known from a partial skeleton consisting of teeth, a damaged lower jaw, humerus, caudal vertebrae and lower limb elements. From the little that is known of Guajiraptor, it can be confidently postulated to be a third example of non-avian dinosaurs transitioning to aquatic habits, alongside Spinosaurs and Halskoraptor. The sizzling early Eocene sun shines down on an open tract of land on the edges of a Brazilian tropical forest. The 10 meter long, heavily built saltosaurid titanosaur, Itaburi Titan, browses nonchalantly taking no notice of an array of smaller animals that have gathered in its wake. A beast of this size brings with it certain a set of benefits that the whole ecosystem can profit from. Parasites and detritus lodged on the sauropod's back provide food for a flock of Alatodus. These tiny, sparrow-sized Anantionothenes are descendants of the late Cretaceous Alexornis and are stem members of the highly diverse order Alexornithiforms. Meanwhile, the tramping footfalls of the creature loosen up the dry topsoil, pushing burrowing invertebrates closer to the surface. Enterprising animals have learned to take advantage of this. The pig-like notosuchian Sarculosuchus digs down into the earth, searching for worms, roots and tubers, while the basal paleonath Protinimus probes the soil for insects. Other creatures are simply going about their daily business, knowing that there is nothing to fear from their giant neighbour. A ruddy Sciarolurus lounges on a branch, catching the last of the early morning sun. This vaguely condylarth-like animal is actually a member of the diverse Eutherian clade Chimolesta, and demonstrates some features not seen in its northern hemisphere relatives. Like many of South America's mammals, the ancestors of Sciarolurus are descended from North American ancestors that island hopped their way southward during the late Cretaceous and early Paleocene. Now isolated on a verdant tropical continent, small insectivorous Chimolestans began to evolve in unusual directions. Sciarolurus is a rather large omnivorous slash frugivorous mammal with broad flat molars, enlarged canines and flexible ankle joints useful for a scansorial existence. Other notable North American immigrants include Metatherians. These adaptable Therians first appear in the South American fossil record during the early Paleocene and, right from the beginning, they radiated in an explosive manner. Two of these can be seen in the second highest branch of the tree. The cat-sized, long-bodied sporacidont Pinherolestes hunts the tiny insectivorous Sansanadelphid, Riodelphopsis. However, not all South American mammals were derived from relatively recent ancestors. Older stalwarts, such as the Dryolestoids, were still present in force and can be split into two broad groups. The first, the probable wastebasket group Leonardoidea, was comprised of generally small insectivorous and omnivorous forms, and are represented here by Quadratodon. This long-tailed, white-furred mammal has a highly flexible diet and is theorized to have been semi-arboreal. The representative of the latter group is the herbivorous Brasiliungulatum planidens, a very large dog-sized mesungulatoid. Indeed, Brasiliungulatum is the largest mammal known from Eocene deposits anywhere in the world. While smaller mesungulatoids were exceedingly common, B. planidens is only known from a single partial skeleton, which reveals an animal with heavily worn molars and a reinforced spine. These adaptations are quite similar to those of the Chimolestan taniodonts, suggesting a similar lifestyle of scratch digging for roots and tubers. Later mesungulatoids generally became smaller and more cursorial as time went on, leaving B. planidens as a curious paleogene side branch. Thank you for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering another animal oddball, the
the cryptic and strange sun bittern of South America. See you again soon. Cheerio.